Hello, I am back. And if any of my coworkers are watching this, they're probably making fun of me right now. So I wanted to make a video about the recent movie that came out, The Dirt, which is about Motley Crue. I've already written about it on my blog and social media a million times. I've been much more active on my blog lately, so I'm going to put the link below so you can keep up with my opinions for stuff there. On with the show. Nikki Six started his press a couple of weeks ago for The Dirt, or really started getting involved in the media, talking about the movie, doing interviews, he was traveling, and because of that there were a lot of stories coming out that I was writing about for Loudwire, and all of the writing about it kind of just sparked my interest. This was going to be the closest thing to a Guns N' Roses movie that would be coming out. Now, funny story, just quick background, when I was little, I refused to listen to Motley Crue because Vince Neil had beef with Axl Rose, and anybody who had beef with Axl Rose had beef with me, even if I was born 10 years after the fact. I really didn't know anything about the band, I had a lot of pretty harsh perceptions of them before reading the book, but I challenged myself to read the book when about three weeks ago when I started writing these stories for Loudwire and I was like I'm going to finish this before the movie comes out and I did I was honestly hooked on the book I, I couldn't put it down the book completely changed my perception of the band members Mick Mars is now one of my favorite people on earth and a couple weeks ago I didn't even know that, that was his name and um, a lot of the things that Vince Neil went through I feel bad about a lot of the thoughts that I've had about the way he looks now and his alcoholism also being blamed for the car accident I mean that's controversial yeah he should have done much more time for it but still it is something that he has to live with for the rest of his life and he pretty much paid the most awful price years later when he lost his daughter at four years old now to get on to the movie that's kind of the whole point of this I was really freaking excited after finishing the book to see how the movie was going to live up to it because Nikki Six did a ton of interviews about how they switched from Paramount to Netflix solely so that they could make it as graphic as they wanted to. Paramount is who put out Bohemian Rhapsody and are doing the Elton John movie and they wanted crew to do a lot of sugarcoating on some of the stuff that happened but the band wanted the movie to reflect the book as much as possible so Netflix was giving the freedom to do that and I, I think it definitely paid off. Again, grew up listening to that era and kind of looking at those people as some of the coolest people ever. As I grew older I realized that a lot of the things bands did back then were very controversial. I made an entire video essay about it for Loudwire talking about how some of the things that bands like Motley Crue did back during the day would not be okay today. They would not make it as a band because society would just shun them and shut them out. I think the casting was excellent. Daniel Weber is like a spitting image of Vince Neil in the movie. It's crazy how they even make him look more like him going on throughout it. I also think that Douglas Booth looks a lot like Nikki in the movie. Not in real life, but it, they did a pretty good job. The guy who played Mick and Machine Gun Kelly don't exactly look like Mick and Tommy, but I think that they did a really good job capturing their personalities. They they portray Mick as the older, more mature and sensible one who is kind of like fuck off to everybody. And in the book that's kind of the language that you can get from him. And also Tommy seems like a immature party animal in a man body. And I mean there's nothing wrong with that to each zone. But I think that Machine Gun Kelly portrayed his personality really well. Even Nikki Six said that he is Tommy. I think just like in the book, the movie does put a lot more of an emphasis on Nikki's narration of it. Nikki kind of is the ringleader of the band. He did most of the songwriting, if not all of it, and he does most of the press now. So he, you know, he kind of is the main spokesperson for the band, but as soon as the movie started and I heard that it was Nikki's character narrating, I, it was just like the book because in the book Nikki's chapters are definitely the longest and if you know anything about Nikki Six, if you've ever heard him talk on the radio, you know that he doesn't really shut up. I, I liked the movie and I think that it was entertaining, I think it was sad, I do think it was a little bit rushed, I think they could have made it a bit longer. I don't see why a movie that's out on Netflix can't push two hours. It was only about an hour and 40, 45 minutes. So um, the beginning was 
pretty smooth and then once it gets to the part after Vince's daughter passing away it's like okay Vince joins the band again and they go out and they do a tour and then everything ends peachy which is not really what happened in real life they did break up again in I think 1999 2000 I mean they wanted to end the movie on a positive note and then it was pretty cool they they showed clips of the actual band playing a show their very last show in 2015 very upset that I missed that tour hopefully they can do like a one-off show here and there uh, sometime again but yeah I mean there were some inaccuracies historically but it did capture the essence of the book pretty well it was full of debauchery it was full of entertainment of sex of drugs of them drinking and of the bad things that happened it obviously showed Nikki dying obviously showed Vince's car accident and his daughter passing away I would have liked to see a little bit more emphasis on Mick I think that he's overshadowed a lot which is also what happens in the book I do think based on what I've read about him that he is more soft-spoken and doesn't say as much so maybe that's why they also didn't show Tommy's marriage with Pamela Anderson which that was kind of a huge part of his life because he finally got to have kids overall as somebody who's a fan of that era as somebody who's now a fan of the band that the movie lived up to my expectations definitely gonna watch it like a million times <laughs> because of the some of the things that are shown in it they're depicted more as a true rock and roll band than Queen was in Bohemian Rhapsody. Bohemian Rhapsody was really just the Freddie Mercury movie but now on to some of the more um, I guess negative aspects of it so I think the fact that the movies on Netflix is both good and bad because good so the fans can watch it however many times they want without having to go buy it pay for it in a theater but also I think the parts that might be bad about it or negative are that people who are bored and happen to stumble across it on Netflix can just watch it and that's fine because maybe it'll lead to a new generation of Motley Crue fans the way Bohemian Rhapsody led to a new generation of Queen fans but there are going to be people who don't know the background of the band and don't really know anything about that era who are going to write them off as a bunch of shitty people and that did horrible things when obviously yes they did horrible things but there's more to the story than that and I probably shouldn't have read reviews of the movie but some of the reviews that I've read are um, I think that they went in with a political agenda intentionally because they know that the band has done fucked up things and they wanted to write a review just ripping to shreds how socially unacceptable the things that they did are. I just think that a lot of the movie reviews are boring and I think that everybody needs to sit back and have a drink and chill because this is it's a movie it's for entertainment purposes if you really want to go and dissect their story and pick them apart you should do it about the book not the movie movies are made for entertainment they're made to be fun and a lot of fans liked this movie everybody's entitled to their own opinion my opinion of their opinion is that they're boring and they went into this on purpose just so they could make a political statement let me know what you think in the comments if you've read the book if you've seen the movie your thoughts on it whatever the case may be what your favorite songs are about Mot motley Crue. uh i mean dr feelgood is definitely in my opinion their absolute best album ta-ta